Welcome to the first episode, or more precisely, episodes of Transformers Animated. Transform and roll out. In this action-packed series opening three-parter, the young leader Optimus Prime and his space bridge repair crew discover the fabled AllSpark. They are then attacked by Megatron and crash land on Earth. Fifty years later, they awaken to the futuristic city of Detroit, where they meet their new human ally, Sari Sumdak. But they are soon attacked once again, this time by the treacherous Decepticon Starscream. Originally maligned by much of the fandom when it was first shown off, in time, Animated eventually won the hearts of fans and proved itself to be one of the best Transformers shows since Beast Wars. I love how this first episode starts off with clips from the original G1 series, presented here as old archival footage from the Great War between the Autobots and Decepticons. Specifically, these clips are taken from the episode Ward On, which was the episode where the Aerobots travel back in time and learn about Optimus Prime's younger days. Which is kind of appropriate because this series is all about a younger version of Optimus Prime. I like how we get to see the Autobots in their Cybertronian forms in this episode. I just wish that we would have gotten more toys of them like this. But unfortunately, out of the main cast of Autobots, I think we only got Cybertronian mode toys of Optimus and Ratchet. I like how Bumblebee refers to Optimus Prime as Big Bot. Bad choice of words, Big Bot! Which was a nickname that Cheetor would often use to refer to Optimus Primal in Beast Wars. What do you think it is, Big Bot? Big Bot, what's happening to you? Guys, check out Big Bot. Big Bot? Which is kind of ironic when you think about it, because this Optimus is actually played by David Kay, who spent many years playing Megatron opposite Gary Chalk's role as Optimus Primal and Prime. Where'd you learn moves like that? I trained at the Autobot Academy. So how'd an Academy bot end up on a broken down maintenance crew? Autobot Academy, huh? Is that anything like Rescue Bots Academy? In this episode, we are introduced to Optimus' old Academy buddy, Sentinel Prime, who was played by Townsend Coleman, who also played the Tick in the animated series, and that's why Sentinel Prime looks like him. And did you know that Townsend Coleman was also the voice of Rewind way back in the original G1 cartoon? So the Autobots are soon attacked by Megatron, but the explosive planted on him by the treacherous Starscream goes off, and the Allspark guides them through the space bridge, which explodes behind them. Hmm, funny how Animated has a space bridge explosion in the first episode of its opening multi-parter, and Prime's last episode of its multi-parter also has a space bridge explosion, and both of them also involve Megatron, and Starscream betraying him and taking command of his ship and the Decepticons. So the Autobots and Megatron crash onto the Earth. And it's interesting when we see the Autobots going into their stasis nap, we see that there is actually an extra pod. Now, this could just be an extra pod for redundancy, but what if there was actually a sixth member of the Autobot crew? Who do you think it would be? I mean, the Autobots in Transformers Animated have a lot in common with the Rescue Bots. Most, if not all of them, correspond to a different emergency service. Optimus is a fire truck, so he's a firefighter like Heatwave. Ratchet is an ambulance, so he's a medbot like Medics. Prowl is a police motorcycle, so he'd probably be a police bot like Chase and Whirl. Bumblebee scanned Captain Fanzone's car, so technically he's also a police vehicle, even though he certainly doesn't act like it. And Bulkhead is technically a SWAT man, so again, police, but he acts more like the muscle. But from what we learn about him later in the series, he's actually pretty smart. So maybe he'd be more like an engineer like Graham and Boulder. So that said, who would fit this imaginary sixth slot if they were to have another member on the team? Obviously, it would be nice to add a flyer, but unfortunately, in the animated continuity, Autobots don't fly. At least not yet. So we can rule out someone like Blades or Windblade. I would like to see a female added to the team, but who would she be and what role could she play since most of them seem to be already covered? Since technically we already have three police bots, maybe someone like Firestar could be another firefighter vehicle. Or someone like Lifeline could be another medical bot. Oh well, we're getting off track. 
let's get back to the review. So 50 years later, we are introduced to the Detroit of the future, which has become the world's leading city in the field of robotics. And of course, I love how we get a cameo by Spike, Carly, and Daniel based on their G1 appearance. And it's funny how Sari's robot dog is named after Spike's father, Sparkplug. And this first part ends with Sumdax microbots fusing into a cockroach and growing out of control. Thus, picking up from where the last episode left off, the cockroach microbot monster seems unstoppable, and a piece of it invades the Ark, awakening the sleeping Autobots, who use Teletran 1 Sky Spy to see what's going on and to scan new alt modes for themselves, just like in G1. Autobots, transform and roll out! Title drop. With no other option, the Autobots reveal themselves to the humans. leading to one of my favorite jokes in all of Transformers. Hi, I'm Bumblebee. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be. I like my name. <laughs> Seriously, I wonder if they only named her sorry in this show just for that one joke. So, thanks to Ratchet's override command and Bumblebee's speed, the Autobots defeat the monster and save Prowl. But he's in bad shape and needs urgent attention. I do like how Bumblebee is able to untransform his arm in vehicle mode. That's something you don't often see Transformers do in media. Uh, am I going to be able to breathe down there? Oh, sure. Let's breathe. Well, it's a good thing that Bumblebee and the Ark are airtight. Otherwise, Sorry might be in trouble. And once inside the Ark, Sorry interacts with the Allspark. Conversation? Interesting. Very interesting. Not to spoil anything in case you for some reason haven't watched through all of Animated before this, which you really should, but I wonder how much of Animated's story was planned out at this point, seeing how this scene relates to a revelation later in the series. And of course, Sari gets her magic Allspark key. How did you get aboard this ship? It followed me home. Can I keep it? Hey, I'm not an it, I'm a she. Thanks for the pronoun clarification, sorry. Can all she's do that? And so the Autobots meet the humans, and they are welcomed as heroes. It's interesting how this series basically starts off with the humans being aware of the Transformers' existence. I think Animated and G1 are the only series that don't really care about the whole robots in disguise thing. In the beginning of part 3 of Transform and Rollout, the Autobots are learning about Earth, including Prowl learning about nature, and Optimus learning about where babies come from. Meanwhile, Starscream arrives on Earth, in a scene that is very reminiscent of Starscream in the 2007 movie. And when Starscream captures Bumblebee, Sumdak, and others, the Autobots hatch a plan to save them. Bulkhead, Ratchet, help the others. What are we supposed to do? Catch it on the first bounce? Yeah, I mean, how slow is that train falling that Bulkhead and Ratchet have any hope of catching it before it hits the ground? Gravity is still 9.8 meters per second squared in this universe, isn't it? Why don't you step down that heavy load and transform to vehicle mode? Starscream is a poet and he didn't know it. And so, Starscream eventually gets his hands on the Allspark, but Optimus won't let him have it without a fight. He manages to get it back from Starscream, but ends up falling. Nice touch of having Optimus turn grey, just like how G1 Optimus Prime did in Transformers the movie. And fortunately, Sari uses the power of the Allspark to return Optimus back to life. Otherwise, how different would the rest of Animated be without Optimus Prime in it? One can only wonder. And we end this episode with the revelation that Sundax technological advances come from studying Megatron. Much like how in the 2007 movie, they claim that a lot of the technology that we enjoy today stems from studying NBE-1, aka Megatron. Microchip, lasers, spaceflight cars, all reverse engineered by studying him. Well, what a great beginning to Transformers Animated. 
It was clearly a show that not only pays homage to the past, incorporated similar ideas from the same time, but also inspired many things in future Transformers series. Like Prime After It, it features a top-notch voice cast, great animation, excellent story, and set a new gold standard for Transformers series to come. What about you? What did you think of this opening three-parter, Transform and Rollout? As always, let me know down in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and all that other fun stuff. And assuming that Animated wins this little face-off with its successor, Prime, I'll see you back here next Thursday for the next episode, Home is Where the Spark Is. See you then. Autobots, transform and roll out!